Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about children and their blankets and their toys, their favorite blankets and their favorite toys. I want you to think back on you. Did you have a favorite blanket? Did you have a favorite toy that you hauled all over with you year after year after year and that you still maybe even have pieces of that favorite blanket or toy that you still keep as an adult? Well, children, many children, not all, but many children have favorite blankets or they have a favorite teddy bear or they have a favorite stuffed animal or some kind of a favorite toy that they love and cherish from year after year after year and they cling to those. So are there reasons, has there been any research done about this topic? Well, the answer is yes, and so let me tell you. First of all, let me tell you um, a story about my little granddaughter. She just turned four years old. But when she was very young, probably just a year old, her mother gave her, well, actually even before she was a year old, when she was just a baby and swaddling blankets, her mother gave her a blanket that had belonged to her that her grandmother had given to her. So now, her, my little granddaughter, she had a blanket from her great-grandmother. She fell in love with that blanket. She called it her towel. And when she was little, she had it wrapped around her head like a scarf whenever she went outside with her sunglasses. It was a pretty cute thing to see. Every time that she came up to visit um, Grandma and Grandpa, us, she always brought her towel and she slept with it every night. It was very comforting. You could tell it was totally comforting to her. Well, the blanket was washed so many times. It was a muslin blanket and it was washed so many times and because of age, it turned into a little teeny tiny piece of cloth. And it was hard to hard see. You were hard pressed to see it. So when she came up to our house, I always asked her if I could put it in a special place until she went to bed at night because I was so afraid it was going to get lost with playing all the toys and everything that we'd never be able to find it. And there were mornings when she woke up and it was somewhere in the bed and we had to rip the whole bed apart to try and find that special little towel, that special blanket. And so that is one of the reasons that they have found that children and even adults love their blankets and their toys because they believe that it holds the essence of their former owner. It's kind of like when you and I, we have an heirloom object that's been passed down for several generations and we feel like it has part of that owner. By owning it, we're being able to reminisce and we're able to learn or to feel close to that particular person. So children can feel that as well with their blankets and toys, especially as been given to them from a mother or grandmother or great-grandmother or somebody that they hold near and dear. It can also be a transitional object, meaning that a child is transitioning from the familiar to the unfamiliar or even in the weaning process or when they're in a frightening situation. Sometimes they want to have that blanket or toy with them. For instance, when you went to visit a uh, a grandparent that maybe was a long distance away, did you take that favorite blanket or toy with you to add comfort? I know I had a favorite uh, toy. It was an LG teddy bear. This was the teddy bear from the 50s and 60s. It was made by Ideal Toy Company and it was the first hypoallergenic teddy bear that they made. It had a rubber face and it had eyes that would open and shut, but the rest of the body was furry and soft and it was about 12 inches uh, and I loved my teddy bear. And it was definitely a transitional object for me because I remember um, different times when I went to my grandmother's when I was just really young and the first thing that I wanted to pack was that teddy bear and to take it with me. A lot of children have these favorite toys. My sister felt the same way about her yellow blanket. My brother felt the same way about his little brown teddy bear. My one daughter-in-law still has the purple blanket that she had as a child and that she hauled away around with her. When she went to college, she took that uh, purple blanket with her. Uh, because it was a transition, it was a rite of passage, it was a new experience for her and she wanted that reminder of home. And my nephew, he had a favorite blanket that he took with him. So it doesn't matter whether you're a female or a male, there are those favorite blankets, there's those favorite toys, there's those, that favorite teddy bear or stuffed animal or something that's really important to you. Now, they're also an important part of bedtime rituals. Uh, many children like to have their teddy bear or their blanket with them before they go to bed at night. Especially when the lights are turned off, they cuddle up and they snuggle up to that toy even tighter and closer. There's a charming little story of Iris Sleeps Over 
that I'm sure that many of you have read to your children. And it's the story of he's going to go sleep. Ira is going to go sleep with, over at his friend's house. And he's so excited. And his sister keeps saying, well, are you going to take your teddy bear? Are you going to take your teddy bear? And he finally decides when he goes over that he's not going to take his teddy bear because he's afraid that his friend may make fun of him. But when it gets time for bed, and they play and they do all kinds of fun things, but when it's time to settle down and to go to bed, guess what? His friend has a favorite teddy bear. So Ira goes back to his house, he gets his favorite teddy bear, and his sister says he's going to laugh, and he says very confidently, no, he's not going to laugh. Because he has a favorite teddy bear, or a favorite um, object as well, that he loves. This is a very charming story, and read that to your children as well. Uh, security blankets uh, are, offer a lot of comfort to children. There's a program called the Linus Program in hospitals, where when a child comes into the hospital for an overnight stay, and you know, hospitals are scary places. They're scary places for adults and they're scary places for children. So they give them one of those comforting objects so that they can hold on to, a blanket that they can hold on to and feel close to and cuddle up to when they have to stay overnight or have some difficult procedure. <clears throat> what a psychiatrist and psychologists and anybody in the, in the studies about children, they said, these security blankets are harmless. Let them have them as long as they want. If they take them into adulthood, who cares? They're not hurting. They're not harming everything. They are something that they want to keep close and keep tight to them. Now, there's one little uh, tidbit, bonus tidbit that I'm going to tell you, and this about um, a book that was written by Brian Sykes. Um, it's all about mitochondrial Eve. He is one of the world's most pr uh, profound and most popular geneticists. And what they have done in, in the studies that they have done is they've taken uh, the mitochondria from mothers, okay? A mother passes her mitochondria, which is in, in her DNA, okay? It's part of the DNA. So she passes that on from one generation to another, but she only passes it on to her daughters. If, all, if she has only sons like me, she loses that mitochondria, okay? But it's only passed on from mother to daughter. So what they've been able to do is to trace all the mitochondria back to seven daughters of Eve. Now, they're not through yet, but they have been able to pass the mitochondria back to the first woman who ever lived on the earth, which I think is really interesting. But what he goes into, and it's very poetic, is he says, imagine holding onto a string. And when he was talking about this, I imagined my little granddaughter holding onto the string of that towel of her great-grandmother. And the weave, it was from her mother to her grandmother to her great-grandmother grandmother and that whole weave, that whole connection between those four generations to her. Well, think about all the generations that go back to Eve and how we as women are all connected together and definitely men too. We just don't pass that mitochondria. And I think it's significant and I think it's interesting that that is how they've traced all the people of the world uh, back to those seven daughters of Eve. If you want to hear, read more about that story, go on my blog. It's fascinating. It's interesting. If you want to read even more, then go and read the book. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.